Alright lads, welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4 and the Der Bruder Krieg mod for our first proper episode. There was actually a couple of focuses that I did not read yesterday. So let me just quickly, I think it was these two? Let me quickly check. No, I think I read that. Yeah, I think it was one of these. Mackinson's Army Reforms, Division Organization, plus 5%, Planning Speed, plus 5%. The Venerable Chief of Staff, August von Mackinson, is a genius. He re-established the old principles of total military discipline and joined it to the new principles of fanaticism and mass conflict fair. The Prussian military is the best on the continent and will crush all who, all who dare oppose it. Prussia is and has always been an army with a state. Now, Bismarck's broken dream. Chancellor Otto von Bismarck had a dream, a dream of German unity under the Prussian eagle. Betrayed by the European powers and our supposed brothers, he failed, dying a broken man. We will always remember him as the man who tried to gain unity and hope that one day his broken dream will be realized. For das Vaterland. Until we achieve German unification, Bismarck's dream will remain broken. Daily political power, uh, political power class point, uh, plus point two. Now, let's start. The Berlin Rally. Goering shall be addressing the people of Berlin on the situation of Prussia. In addition to government and military officials, tens of thousands are expected to flock to the Realmstag to watch the glorious realms marshal speak. I was half wondering if uh, Königsberg would be our capital, but no, it is indeed Berlin. 28, 25 million people, and we'll be able to snatch up millions more before going to getting into a conflict with Austria. Hope, I mean, you know, if we had to fight the French or the Russians, now that would be a serious fight. But the Austrians, I mean, they're the weakest of the three. Also, I was just uh, reading France's National Spirits. They were not involved in the Europa Krieg, which is just insane to me. Oh, I love that they have the, the combination of the stars and the uh, tricolor. Very nice. Is, the, is it just me or is the red a bigger part of the, the biggest part of the tricolor? That looks odd. Looks bigger than the blue and the white, or the navy and the white. Now, oh, the Berlin Rally. Herman waded into the crowd, enjoying the adulations of his loyal followers surrounding him. This is more like it. People of the realm, he shouted, a new year is dawning. And with it, another chance to prepare for final victory. More cheering, as you all know, there are traitors in our midst and enemies lurking outside. If we let them, they will destroy the idea of a united Germany. Bismarck's dream will never come to pass, but if we stand united, no one can hold us back. The cheering intensified. The feeling of the rally was unbelievable. Ernst Röhm stood at the head of the column of his men. While he clapped and cheered with the rest of them, and internally he smirked, not at the Volk, never at the Volk, but at that fat fool in the centre of them. Didn't anyone realise that Göring was soft? That damn Freikorps, that bastard coupling of the aristocrat and the banker was ruining the national revolution. Final victory. That would never happen with them in the saddle. And yet Goering had fought in the conflict he thought, slightly uh, slipping deeper into contemplation. He did really need to write a definitive text on his dream. Ooh! Italy going after the Senussi order. Bold move. I was actually just checking the Ottoman Empire has exclaves. Oh, and so does Italy. Did they just gain that territory? I didn't notice them having this territory. At the start of the game, maybe as soon as they declared war, they immediately just got... Uh, maybe these are supposed to be the landings. Or maybe they maybe they did have that territory and I just didn't notice. Either way, very interesting. Best of luck to our Italian brothers in reclaiming... Or no, no. <laughs> just not reclaiming, just claiming Libya. Now, can we help them with that? It'd be good to get some experience. <laughs> the Italian Revolutionary Consulate is, is bundle of sticks. Uh, so are we, apparently. They're a national syndicalist, and so are we. Which is odd. Faction management interface. This interface allows to interact with their fellow faction members. Oh my god, what is this? Faction opinion, factories. They've got more factories. We have more troops, though. We have more aircraft. They have more ships, obviously. Command. Not sure what that's about. Garrison duty unit. What? Oh, we can tell them what to do. This, that's, oh, that's fantastic. How do I go back? How do we get out of this? Uh, okay, there we go. Faction relations coming soon. Fantastic. Ah, this is great. Conflicts coming soon. Command editor. Maybe I better stay out of that. It sounds like it has to do with the code itself. <laughs> have I just opened up a big menu? I feel like I might have. Oh, no, I haven't. Does nothing. Okay, I thought something was loading. Never mind. We need more steel. Sweden, give us steel. I don't, I don't suppose Italy can... Italy can give us steel. Fantastic, we will trade with our faction members. I believe we need three. Part of Japan can cut back on those aluminium or uh, chromium. Imports, fantastic. 
Now, where were we? He really didn't need to write a definitive text on his dream for Germany. Maybe he has a plan. I'll give him one last chance to really finish the National Revolution to purify the nation of the Reds, the aristocrat capitalists, and the degenerates. One last chance. August von Mackensen looked over at the SA columns with rage, invisible to most observers. His men hid it less well. He could see what some of them were. were the, he could see that some of them were this close to spitting on the brown shirt thugs across from them. That fat fool of an airman and the mad king of the thugs and gutter people. What's Prussia coming to? He shook his head wearily. If he said Prussia out loud, Rome would call him anti-German. Not that he wouldn't do it anyway. Damn Bismarck to hell! He thought if he had known what his betrayal of the Kaiser would do to Prussia. But all we can do is try to fix it. He whispered to the bewilderment of his aides. That happens to me sometimes, like, I'll be thinking something, and uh, and the words just comes tumbling out of my mouth. It happens as well when I'm writing, and my mind starts to drift. I'll just start writing what I'm thinking without realising it. Now, Kurt von Schleicher was with his wife, Elizabeth, listening to Goering's speech on the radio. He had to, to avoid suspicions, but he'd heard it all before. Can you not listen to something more interesting? His wife asked Kurt, considered, well, I suppose I could, but of course I shouldn't, because we should all be unswervingly loyal to the realm's marshal, savior, uh, savior of Germany. Smiling as he said, Elizabeth smiled too. I still don't know how a man like him got a hold of our nation. I thought about that too, and it's pretty simple. Elizabeth looked at him in surprise. He made connections. He played enough people. He planned well, and he struck at a perfect moment. I don't love him, but his coup was a masterstroke, but he's gotten lazy. Kurt didn't want to go on, not then, but it was obvious what he was thinking. He had so many plans for national mobilization. I'm the truest patriot in all Germany, he thought. I'll do whatever it takes to win ideology be damned under the pomp divisions lurk. Patriots in control, but mo other patriots also want control. I was going to say, yeah, Italy's going to call us in. This seems like a fantastic opportunity to get some experience, even if it is against the likes of the Sanusi order. At the very least, we can send some aircraft. We will certainly accept your call to conflict. But we'll hit our stability and thus our factory output. Now, yeah, no volunteers to deal with. Fantastic, we can just... Do we have a port? We don't have a port. Do you have an airbase? You have an airbase. Fantastic, I will assist you however I can. We'll send up our fighters. Do we have some new ones? We don't. We do have some tactical bombers. Perfect, we'll send those over. Fantastic. As soon as they get a port, we will send something All over. Right. They need to take Tobruk. They've only got two units, though. And Tobruk is kind of the only port they can take. I think might get crushed here. How many troops does uh, the Snoozy Order have? Not many, to be fair, but still only two divisions. You need to take a port badly or build one or something. We'll send you what aircraft we have. Or at least that we have space for. Hey, they don't have any aircraft here. Do you not actually have any aircraft? If you don't, that's fine. I can send you more. No, you do. Logistic strike. What? Hey, work properly, please. There we go. But if that's the case, I'll send you more tactical bombers. That will certainly put things in your advantage. Ah, oh, God. You didn't have any aircraft there when I was sending this, and now you have... Oh, fantastic, they left. German aircraft will support you. They should be doing a good job. Oh, look at that. Look at that. We'll single-handedly win the war for Italy, baby. Luftwaffe. Nice. Another classic Condor Legion W. As long as you don't lose the damn airbase. What else can we do? Maybe bring the fleet down, I guess. No, not that. There we are. Uh, gentlemen, knights, new plan. Down there. Do what you can with straw bombardment. Now, the issue of the militias. 120 political power unlocks the clash of the militias decision. Uh, Gets men containing the militias. The storm of Tyrone, the party's militia, has been acting with increasing radicalism and disrespect. The reactionary Freikorps who helped crush the revolution are demanding the dissolution of the SA. Both might prove a threat to our power. Who should we, su uh, who should we support? Mine runs, Marshal. Recording is good. Fantastic. Containing the militias. Yes, indeed. We'll do a focus while we're waiting. Uh, anything else? Just the navy tree. Nothing really. Okay, fine. Now, containing the militias, the militias of the anti... Ooh, yeah, yeah, you have lost the province here. 
Yeah, to be fair, to be fair though, you don't have a port, so, you know. As long as you just don't lose the air base, it'll be fine. Probably. The militias of the anti spartacist alliance have become staunch rivals. The Storm of Tylung, our personal militia, have expanded massively since Operation Hummingbird. This increasingly radical leader of the SA, Ernst Röhm, is advocating the destruction of all medieval structures and the establishment of a future Spartan state. This view has made them increasingly rowdy, rapacious, and worst disloyal to the Rums Marshal. Röhm is, a, uh, Röhm especially, is becoming a is becoming a major threat. The second problem is the Freikorps formed as a reactionary nationalist organization in the wake of Luxembourg's abortive revolution. They fought side by side with the Wehrmacht and SA against their partisans. After the death of uh, their political supporters in Operation Hummingbird, they were theoretically integrated with the Wehrmacht. Uh, where were we? Not the Wehrmacht. Uh, but their reactionary Volkish nature was maintained. That'll be August von Mackensen. They are on the outs with the regime, but they may be pers uh, might be persuaded to uh, rally around us, I assume, if the SA are removed. While the SA think of the Freikorps as reactionary traitors, and they may be given the... Oh, you lost the airbase! You... Oh. We can still support you. Okay, perfect. Just in a lessened role. 65% still? What if we based out of uh, Sicily? I will hold it here. Because we've uh, built up our 10 days. Now, oh, where were we? And they may be given the recent leader, Damarung. The Freikorps considered the SA lowborn wretches as bad as the Spartacists. What's more, the Freikorps has strong Wehrmacht support and angering one will anger the other. Uh, waiting will only anger both, so we must destroy one to appease the other. Her realms, Marshal, who shall we destroy? The Freikorps are traitors, we must fulfill the national revolution. Locks the clash of the militia's decision. The power of the SA shall spread throughout Prussia. Devno to unlock the Rome path, select this option. Okay, perfect, perfect. That's what I was thinking anyway, but good to know. Good to be sure. Hmm. Conflict and all conflicts. The world is at a crossroads with conflicts erupting between the old order and the new on different fronts. Your actions in the following years will decide the course of Earth from decades to come. Currently, the nations are building up, preparing for the final struggle. A leader shall guide their nations through the initial phase of phases of conquest and mobilization and solve domestic problems. Now, Kaiser Karl's speech. Today, Karl gave an address on the future of Austria. Despite news of an assassination attempt, Karl... Oh, no. You're so close to taking to Brook. Take it. Take the port and you win. And just hold on the port. Uh, despite news of, his, of an assassination attempt, Karl made his way safely to give his speech at the uh, Stephen uh, Plautz. Should I be happy Stephen Platz? Uh, despite the massive crowd turnout in Vienna, he remains unpopular. Ah, uh, you're fucked. Uh, he remains unpopular among many ethnic minorities like the Hungarians and Czechs. Karl must soon decide on how to deal with all the chaos they are causing in the Empire. He must deal with Austria's slowly uh, slowing economy and the complexity of German politics as Austria is at a crossroad. I tell you that, I, joining this war was already a mistake. I should have stayed out and just sent volunteers. We shall see. So what's the efficiency like now? It's at 46%, okay, so basing out of the Dodecanese is better. Okay, so be it. Hopefully we can still at least some... Okay, come on. We're supporting you. Uh, I think it might be Jover for Italy. They could have taken to Brook, but they, they didn't. And now it's not looking too good. Now, the clash of the militias. The SA and Freikorps militias have been have both been key for Goering's rise to power, but internally hate each other. Now that we have sided with the SA, we must prevent the other side from causing major unrest by making our supporters' influence 50 greater than the other side. Okay, okay. So currently the SA is at 25, and the Freikorps is at 15, even though the Freikorps has the Wehrmacht? That makes no sense. If we let our tools and militias obtain too much power, they might launch an internal coup against Goering. Okay. So, infiltrate reactionary regiments. Freikorps power decreased by 10. Workplace reforms. Ugh. Doesn't seem good. I don't like that. Commissions of the SA. That seems way better. Granting commissions in the army to the SA will increase our manpower and their loyalty. However, we should be aware of disrupting the military balance of power. Yeah, do that. Infiltrate reactionary regiments. After infiltrating a Freikorps regiment, you're ready to take it over. And reducing Freikorps influence in the army. Yep, yeah, sounds good. Provide weapons to Freikorps. No, no. Why would I do that? I'm surprised I can do these decisions even though I've helped uh, Rome. Should we do this? I guess we'll do it anyway. No, no. What? Well, we're actually holding. Oh, if only we had 100% efficiency with our bombers, we'd be able to really hit them. Now, add it SA Primacy, which grants division uh, recovery at plus 5%. 
Conflict support plus 5%, damage to garrisons minus 10%, gains or oh, bros. If he's about to get crushed, maybe. Gains 5 SA influence. Ernst Rohr may be a frothing radical, but he is not a fool. With uh, our crushing of reactionaries, we can get his fealty to Goering in exchange for some of his reforms to finish the National Revolution. Come on, Italy, you've got bigger things to deal with. Oh, man, they've lost his vision. Stop attacking, man. It's over. Where is our Operation Emancipation? Has launched an invasion of the West African nation of Liberia. Reject the US demands. See if the nation was using forced labor. Where's the fleet? Bay of Biscay? Why the Bay of Biscay? Why the hell are you holding position there? I, I saw the arrow go all the way over here. Move, move, move. Oh, I don't think you can. I don't think we're allowed through. Alright. Oh well. About to get wiped out, man. Oh, baby, Italian naval invasions. Libya's back on the menu. Let's go. Get them. Get a feckin' air base as well if you can. Oh, come on, baby. You can do it. You can do it. Yes, round to Brook. Come on. You can do it. Oof. The Italians have more divisions than what they started with, but still don't have a port. They are bombed the hell out of them, though. Oh, I think. Oh, I think they'll get us. Fifty greater than fight or hopefully. This is the SA. We'll do that again. The DAF, the Deutsch AI, the Deutsches uh, Arbeits Front. Play workplace reforms. Okay, we'll get that soon. Fantastic. Can't do that for a while, so we'll probably uh, hop over and grab the realms here capabilities. 150% cost reduction for land auction. The realms here should, main, should mainly focus on land technology, capacity, and capability. Those three ideas are what allows our military to triumph over all others in the end. Oh, come on, man. These guys are throwing up a fight, to say the least. Submarines can't do short bombardment. That would be fair if they had, uh, if they had uh, deck guns, they probably could. Yeah, we can't get them through. Even if I tried to do that. Oh, so now you can move. How very convenient. Napoleon VI, new constitution. Critical news coming from France. Emperor Napoleon VI has signed a, a decree giving himself more power. Oh, okay. Using terms previously from the constitution of 1852, which is great grandfather Napoleon III, Bonaparte drafted to create the second French empire. Oh my god, they, yeah, they have multiple empires as well. Dark days in France. Now, get there. Shore bombardment. Come on, baby. Assist our Italian brothers. So now you should start suffering shore bombardment. Right? That's how that works. Aren't you suffering? What if I get you to do this? Should, is that working now? Should be. Why the hell isn't that working? Can I can I not support my allies with the storm bombardment? Oh, so what am I saying? That, that, that's uh, one tile too far. There we go. Minus twenty five percent storm bombardment. Let's go. Big German gun supporting. Fantastic. Is this one also being included? Yes, it is. Fan. Oh, attack! Attack, man! Attack! Oh, why do you have two divisions on the bloody border? Oh, come on, man. Oh, no, please don't let this end. How many casualties have you already taken? 13,000. Come on, man. Is this going to be like the... Is this going to be the, the first... Uh, Italo-Abyssinian war of this timeline? Oh, man, this isn't looking good. This is not looking good. I, th I thought that we were so back once those Italian divisions landed, but now it's not looking too hot. And I'm running out of fuel, too. Come on. Last ditch effort. Come on. They got the short and bottom 10 penalty. You got close air support attack. Yeah, come on, baby. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. Three divisions. The Blue Revolution. Today, Blue Shirt, a T.O., a Terusi, flocked by thousands of armed militiamen, marched on the pretty palace in Florence, Terusi. Accompanied by General Alessandro Pavolini, stormed the Grand Senate of the ruling ANI and assassinated major leaders, including Michele Bianchi and Costanzo Ciano. The blue shirts have aligned themselves with several different fringe factions, including Rodolfo Graziani's golden mercenaries, to crush all resistance, whether the regime will survive much longer or only time can tell. That's crazy. Are they still an ally, though? Italia Zura, Blue Italy. Not familiar with Attilio, or Attilio uh, Teruzzi. Kind of got the Dino Grandi beard going on, though. 
Ooh, nice flag, though. Great flag. Oh, man, that, that's basically every Italy combined flag. You got the crown, you got the eagle clutching the fasces, you got the cross. Oh, man, that looks good. Come on, pull out a win. New government, pull out the win. And you stopped attacking. Oh, man. You are you landing anywhere else? Oh, oh, man. Oh, it's not looking good, fellas. I'm running out of fuel. I'm trying to help you as much as I can. Uh, who will I buy off? I'll buy off of the Russians. I'm buying four days fuel. You better win. Oh, it's not going to be enough. I, I don't have any more factories. From now on, what, what you get is what you get. We're still helping somehow. Yeah, still getting the short bombardment. Do this, yeah. Retire reactionary officers. Move class of the militias, which grants political power gain minus 10%. Conflict support minus 10%. The reactionary officers, the hero are Fry and Freikorps, especially von Mackensen. No! Need to go while their work is admirable. We will convince them. We will convince some to retire. We will retire them ourselves. Yeah, retire them with a bullet. Oh, man. Come on. I'm giving you my all here. I'm giving you the, the big guns of the... Craig's Marine, I'm giving you the Luftwaffe. Oh, come on, baby. Prague Massacre. Protests around Bohemia for Czech autonomy have been going on for years now. The Austrian police force have had provided inadequate, uh, had, had provide, had proved inadequate to suppress the riots. Two Dayton loyalist paramilitaries have been called in and were joined by the army. Suddenly, at uh, Wenceslaus Square, a shot rang out. Instantly, the soldiers opened fire, killing 200 protesters and wounding 300 more. 28 Austrian men were killed the day that will go down in history. Oh, bright. It's over. It's so it's over. The Nation of Arms. Replace SA Primacy with the Nation of Arms. Effective change in entrenchment speed plus 10%. And damage to garrisons minus 5%. Military factory construction speed plus 10%. The more powerful militia may try to seize control while the superior... With the superior reactionary is disposed of... We can fulfill Rome's ideal of a Spartan society, where every man is a warrior for Germany, every child a replacement, every woman, every every woman, every yeah, every woman a warrior factory, and as well as in the factories, we need as many men as possible. What are the casualties at? Thirteenth. Ah, oh, man. Oh, never mind. They landed. Oh, <laughs> we're so back. It's one of the best pans out I've ever seen in my life. Tell you what, though, in the interest of Saving the lives of tens of thousands of Italian... Well, thousands of Italian men. We'll keep the, the fleet here. We'll keep them here to continue that short bombardment, continue the air support. In fact, we should now be able to relocate our air... They don't have an air base yet. That's a problem. We, we can do command power, though. Get that efficiency up. Of course, the efficiency is quite low at the moment due to a lack of fuel. Oh, but Italy is one. Italy is one. Thank God. Thank God. It was looking bad there for a while. It was looking so bad. That's it, come on. Yeah, you're okay. You're okay now. Occupation of Venice after years of strife and terrorism in the Veneto region. Austria's new centralist policy provoked the Young Italy. Okay, Young Italy is an organization. To declare open revolt, luckily for Kaiser Carl, the Imperial Army crushed the unrest with ease, led most ironically by the Kaiser Elizabeth Division, named after the Empress who was killed by Young Italy assassins. The military hung the heads of the traitors uh, on the Porta, upon the uh, Porta Vittoria Gate. Now, completing the National Revolution. Ernst Rome was behind the curtain. His most loyal men were gathered with him, and the SA 1st Protection Battalion were dispersed throughout the beer hall. They had all expected more of the same shice. Be loyal to the realms, Marshal, our lord and saviour. Rome snorted. All that fat bastard was good for it was a figurehead, and with von Mackensen and his old Prussian bullshitters out of the picture, he wasn't good for anything. He was weak, and if Rome believed in anything, it was that the strong survived the weak perish. He came out, and the non-coms, oh, they were called Haupt Schar uh, leader, but that's what they were. Got uh, all his rowdy boys to quiet down. Not an easy task, but they managed. Fellow soldiers, Rome began to brave sons of Germany. Our nation is under threat. Some of the men looked at each other 
other nervously, wondering where this was headed. Rome would soon make it clear Rome's Marshal Goering has failed the Volk and the Realm. He won't take the measures necessary for Germany's final triumph. He won't complete the National Revolution. More whispering, good. It is the duty of all Germans to resist the ineffective rule of Goering. He is weak, and us strong men must beat him down, or all will be lost. Will you follow me? The cheers of assent was all Rome needed. The SA troops stormed the Randstadt, and Goering is killed while trying to escape. He retires, yeah, into a grave. Prussian Volks uh, realm will be known as the Prussian Salvation Front, and Ernst Rome becomes, becomes leader for the National Syndicalism Party. Look at that flag! Not sure if I like it, I quite like the other one. Here he is! Ernst Rome, no description, shame. I feel like this is the final Antifa flag. Oh my god. Now, consolidating power. Change the popularity of National Syndicalism, 5% gain base stability plus 5%, 100 political power. Gain unlocks uh, Quell Spartacus to influence decisions. With his victory, the leader may destroy any opposition from the wretched, uh, from the wretched Spartacus Bund for the good of Deutschland. Come on, Snoozy's almost got to be there. Are you kidding me? Take, take, a, take a VP. One VP should knock him out. Oh, naval invasion for... Uh, oh, that's fantastic. Look at that. Attack from, attacking from almost all sides. The Luftwaffe and the Kriegsmarine has assured that these men will be saved. Fantastic. And we should be able to redeploy our aircraft now. Though it's still a lack of fuel, that's a problem, not just the range. By the way, it... Oh man, we can't even... We have nothing for it? It's so bad, lad. Oh, we've got something, clearly. Maybe that's Italian aircraft. Uh... No, it's all ours. I think. Italian casualties. 13th... Damn, yeah, they managed to do all though all that advance and all these battles without even lo losing an extra thousand men. Oh, and thank God. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, lad, I was worried there for a second. Whew. I have to keep up our imports of fuel because now we have no fuel. Excellent work. Admiral Raider. Excellent work indeed. Oh, back to dock in Hamburg. We do have Hamburg. That's fantastic. That was some good experience for us as well, though. Of course, the experience doesn't really matter because they weren't fully trained. Back to training, please. The Red Mistress back. Okay, we need some sort of concession for that. Maybe, maybe something down the line. We'll get something off of Italy for that. Also, for, for some reason, they've just made South Tyrol one big state instead of splitting it into... Oh, excuse me, South Tyrol and Trentino. Th this southern half here is Italian, this northern half is Austrian. Shame. Now, the Red Mistress back at home. An interesting piece of news was passed by Rome's death this morning, making the unusually jovial figure drop his act for a concerned moment. The Red Queen... Oh. Uh... Austrian Empire declared war on the revolutionary Hungarian state, and they are big. The uh, the Red Queen of the Spartacist movement has been spotted in one of the more prolific working class quarters of Berlin. The fledgling state security apparatus had assumed this nuisance to have still been in the Netherlands for a self imposed exile. Was Luxembourg involved in a workers' rally? Did she begin her usual play? Rome stared down at the adjutant by the door, forcing a small instinctual recoil on the man. No, sir, she was spotted being brought into what we assumed was a safe house by the time we had acted on the informant's tip. She and her supporters had already fled. Rome turned in his chair thoughtfully, looking out of the window in a daze. With a flick of the wrist, he dismissed the adjutant by his lip so profusely it began to heavily bleed a worrying sign yes we got decisions or something about fighting them didn't we we're about to okay fantastic now Hungary asked for help against Austria the Hungarians are in revolt they've asked for some support against the Austrians support them or why die for Budapest yeah we get, some, we get to send some volunteer divisions send them some infantry equipment and 10,000 manpower Third Hungarian revolt in Austria, a revolution in Austria. Today, the uh, Palatin, and Pal yeah, Palatinate of Hungary was assassinated in revenge for the traitor Kuhn's public ex uh, uh, traitor. Yep, Belakon, Belakun, Bel I think it's Belakun. Public execution. The remaining Hungarian regulars and militiamen are joining the guerrilla revolutionaries into a second government of national defense led by Mihaly Karoli. The brave imperial. Oh, uh, yeah, this guy's in uh, Kaiser Redux as well. And the brave imperial garrisons then join the fight, and battles are occurring throughout Hungary. Austria slowly collapses. This is fantastic. I mean. How many men does Austria have? Because we've got almost half a million. Can we just take them right here, right now? Ah, oh, well, why am I looking at that? Let's look at this. Probably not. 
Ah, uh, yeah. No, no, we couldn't. Once they bring in these, yeah. They've got too damn many. Shame. Now, oh, consolidating power. Did I read that? No, I did. Good, good, good. <laughs> now, Nikolai Belogurov, URP, triumphs in the Russian Republic. Union of Russian People's Party, a seismic shift in Eastern European politics. Conservative and imperialist followers pl uh, plan to put an end to the liberal era of Russia, implementing conservative economic reforms, ensuring armed loyalty, and possibly returning the Tsar. Yeah, the fact that the, the Tsar and, the, and like, the monarchists just kind of gave up Russia without a fight to the Republicans is just odd. The victory for the Russian nobility, definitely. Intercepted plans of Spartacus riots. Recently, some of our spies within Spartacus have leaked plans of rioting in major cities, shutting down industry and causing chaos. We must put a stop to this before it can happen by stationing troops in the regions they plan to riot in. We must hurry our troops. Oh, I see. We have to put troops in those states, is it? Something like that? For every state that the Spartacus riot uh, is in, it will decrease our progress on crushing the Spartacus threat by 5%. Ah, yeah, perfect. All right. Let's see if we just do an area defense. Something like that. Forget about the coastline. Air bases, railroads, forts. Yeah, just do that. Maybe do air bases as well. Yeah, there we go. Do that, see if that works. Hinder Pomeran. And it's over already. <laughs> the Spartacus saw oh, they're immediately crushed. That was easy. Brazilian civil conflict ended his third year. Fantastic. Well, not for them. Our revolutionary plot gets against Spartacus. Prevent arms from reaching the Spartacus. Increase progress by 10%. Oh, our progress in crushing the public control is the menace. I should have called it Spartacus Menace, because I, I think it's, uh, Rom definitely considers him a public controlist of some kind. Now, ever since our glorious Rom's marshals saved us from the far left Spartacus movement in 1930, they have been a painful thorn in our side. As a public controlist plot looms on the horizon, we must take extreme measures to make sure the radicals cannot seize power again. Okay, we got 500 days. This should be handy, lad. 10% progress for 25 political power. Yeah, breakups. Oh, uh, shit. Whoops. Didn't realize that gave us consumer goods. Ah, oh, it did. 5%. Okay, for only for uh, 35 days. That's fine. Breakup strikers. Minus 5% stability for 35 days. 5% factory and dockyard output. Another 10% progress. Minus 25 units of infantry equipment. Minus 3% base stability. Minus 3% dem stock support. 5% political power gain. Minus 0 0.02 daily democratic public controlism support. Increased progress for 10%. That's for the ban of potentially public controllers gatherings. Expand anti public controllers publications. 0.25 daily political power cost for 100 days. Increased progress for 10%. Okay, that's 40% right off the bat. Handy. Can't do this, yes. Oh, I have to cross the Spartacus. Okay, so that's good. That, that gives us a little bit of time to do the rest of the focus. Yeah, we can do the focus issue. To be fair, we'll probably be dumping all of our political power into into these Spartacus decisions, so we won't do this one, because it seems like that requires political power. There's some factories there, to be fair, though. It's always good to get the industry early on. Horse being the heart of gods, oh my god. We'll just do this one first. It's always, you generally work left to right, anyway. The same way you'd read. Free up a faction for ourselves. Buy from the British. Now the Volkish issue gets event the war on occultism. The esteemed leader, having survived the attempted leftist coup, must now deal with the enemies of the new order. The public controllers, of course, but also the purged Volkish occultists who still command large amounts of power despite their purging in Untername and Calibri. Is it Untername and Calibri or Untername and Hummingbird? The game, the game doesn't know. We must deal with the threats to Germany. Why? The, what's going on with the steel? Is it with the ships? 
Might be. Getting that oil back slowly but surely. How many men do you have? Not many. And again, we only really need you for one front. You could blockade the Austrians. You should be. There's no way the Austrians, has, the Austrians have a bigger fleet, and you can just bl block them right up right here. To be fair, though, we probably wouldn't want a small area. We want a big area so that we can crush their smaller fleet. If 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 uh, the Austrians bottle up the Italians, that the, the size um, difference won't matter as much. Now, the war on occultism soon, uh, since Rams, Kanzler Bismarck, and the Volkish coalition overthrew the monarchy, the occultist and artist group was running the country. Uh, they promised a great Germany, restoring the glory we had during the fall of the Roman Empire. Together with the, with the descendants of Rome, we fought the traitors to reclaim Germany, uh, but they failed us. We were betrayed by our allies, but also betrayed by the Volkish, who lacked the will to see the deed done. Nevertheless, the Goering's followers allowed the Volkish to persist and supported them when Luxembourg's criminal Reds tried to run Germany into the ground. But after the Reds were beaten, the Volkish were a liability to Germany. Their, uh, their leaders were granted the dignity of being shot, their organizations broken and exiled. The Volkers mostly seem to have good intentions, even if they lack the ability to fight in the best way for Germany, being overly focused on pagan pursuits, then uh, then did that distract from unification. We would likely be able to reconcile with most of them, inviting them back to Germany and put them to work energizing the nation, though they will have to be watched, of course, but they are a threat with, with significant popular following. So what's happening with this? For every state that the Spartacus right is in, it will decrease our progress and crush the Spartacus threat by 5%. Okay, so nothing should change right now. Well, it's at 0% anyway, but you know what I mean. Uh, so I think we have at least four divisions in every state. One, two, three, four. No, only two in Ostpreußen, to be fair. And we've got a decent number of divisions in every state. Yeah, we should be fine. <coughs> oh, fantastic. Oh, so the decisions escalate the further you get. Very nice. Now... But they are a threat with significant popular following and reactionary elements among the Wehrmacht and Freikorps despise them. An alternative answer, therefore, is allowing the Protestant Church, who the Volkers suppressed, a role subordinate to the state in German life. The values of discipline and honesty may be more natural, uh, maybe, yes, maybe more natural to many Germans than the Nordicist beliefs of the Volkers. Which faction should we back? We must choose a side. I think this is Ernst Rom's path. Yeah, I, I would do this if I had, if I had a choice. Now, revoke church autonomy, add state Nordicism, which grants army organization regain plus 10%, add minor on upset in the state, which grants uh, division training time plus 10%, daily command power gain minus 0 0.05. The Protestant Church of Prussia has been a source of authority separate from, from us for far too long. Despite protests from the army, this has to be done to cement our authority and reconcile the Volkish. Oh, we got another factory. I need those ships. Give me those ships. Room class. Yep, yeah, hungry is not lasting long. I wonder where Talibal is. Anyway, let's go back to this faction management system. You kind of owe me. Distribute. You said the plans of Spartacus rights. Uh, recently, some of our spies within Spartacus have leaked plans of rioting in major cities, shutting down Israel and causing chaos. Let's hurry our troops. Ostpreußen, Thuringen, and northern Schleswig. Kind of fail to see how you, how you could ever fail any of these. Now, Ostbrandenburg, Ostpreußen, and Northern Are Schleswig. So, that's probably what... That's Northern Schleswig is here. So, we just do something like this. Oh, that, that probably is Ostbrandenburg right there. Let's double check again. It was Ostbrandenburg, Ostpreußen, and Northern Schleswig. So, that's Ostpreußen right here. Ost Brandenburg, yeah. And Northern Schleswig. Yeah, perfect. Redeploy immediately. And it's over. <laughs> Just like that. 
Now, back to where you all were. Appeal to the people for conflict. Conflict support, that's fine. We're already on partial mode, that's good, that's good. Let's start spinning some command power. Last thing we want is to cap out and not and uh Shirby Alexander's the Mad Institute's absolutism. Today King of uh, Serbia Alexander I declared a state of emergency, dissolving the government and gave himself absolute power. Ever since his wife was assassinated by an anarchist in 1933, Alexander has gone into a spiral of madness, once a federal constitutional monarchy. Serbia has now become an absolute state and Alexander continues to purge the black hand. Some members of the military viewed the act as tyrannical and have proclaimed a resistance to Alexander. Serbia falls into chaos. The underground forms Belgian government. In important news today from the land of waffles, Leon de Grel has won a re election in the 1936 Belgian elections. Running on a nationalist and Catholic platform, the, the Walloon was able to secure an easy victory over the op opposition candidate, Paul von Zeeland. Because of de Grel's French leading policies, the Action Francaise was believed to have played a critical role in his win. Westminster has uh, Westminster watched the election in fear while Napoleon VI government to rejoice as France's influence in the Benelux continues to grow, or at least is maintained. Readmit or reappoint? We will allow Volkish leaders to return to Germany and resume their party membership, but a close eye will be kept on the. Oh, I see, I see. Uh, yeah, I really don't like not, um, paganism, so we'll go for this. Readmit Volkish leaders, remove minor upset in the state, which grants revision training time plus 10%, daily command power gain minus 0 0.05, modify state nordicism by political power gain plus 5%. Fantastic. I feel like like we shouldn't. This shouldn't remove it. It should just maintain it as it is. Ooh, execute uh, Liebknecht. Yes. Raid Spartacus safe houses. Twenty five political power minus fifty units of infantry equipment. Minus two percent demstock support. Another ten percent progress. Fantastic. Raid more safe houses. And raid them again. Wait, this doesn't actually do anything. Oh, never mind. It does give me five percent. Good. Spend anti-public controllers publications. Uh, no, we'll trap Luxembourg's movement. Yeah, do that. Oh, we got her. Good. Paul Frolic becomes leader for the Demsock party. 85% already. Oh, my God. Soon enough, we'll have them. We're already at 85%. Didn't need nearly as much time. As we were given. Not this music. Blue Italy. Now Vest Preussen, Armland, Masorden, and Thorian. We don't really cross them there, fantastic. Vest Preussen and Northern Schleswig again. We should just do that, and hopefully they all redeploy to enough of them. Yeah, but not Northern Schleswig. Okay. All right. And there we have it. Finished again. Spent any public anti-public controllers publications after oh, a hundred days. Really? That's that's horrendous. A hundred days. Plus 0.25 daily political power costs while we're at it. Upset at the Vienna Cup. What was meant to be a redemption for a certain team has instead led to great tragedy. The redemption for the entire nation in the sport they created has passed. The Anglo stand defeated as the continent celebrates their defeat. It started a month earlier as the Vienna Cups were beginning. Oh, okay. Can't do this until we're at war. Fantastic. Straight over to the industrial plan, so. 
The outcome it was believed would lead to national embarrassment. The events began as, as was expected with the Danish, Italian, Spanish and Italian teams taking leads in their brackets and moving on to the semi-finals. As the semi-finals began, the crowd had a great uproar for their home team. The English using tactics that can be described as less than fair. They emerged victorious over the Danish team. Earlier, the Italian team secured a victory of the Spanish team but was utterly disappointing in this venture. Finally, it was time for the finals. Uh, the English versus the Italians. Each side of the stadium was excited for their team, with the English being the most excited for the event. This was mainly due to Italy's poor performance in the semi-finals, which was seen as a sign that the English would easily defeat them in this final match and take home the victory. However, the arrogance of the English had led to their downfall, with both teams stagnating during the game. By the end of it, both the English and Italians had a tie score 1-1. Penalty kicks will decide who won the contest between these these two teams. In a huge upset for the English, the Italians barely scraped out a victory. <laughs> Fuck the English. Oh my god. We like the English. We're Prussians. What the hell are you talking about? Britain is fucking BFF right now. Well, Britain and Italy. I mean, risk realistically, who are our friends? The Spanish, because, you know, the French. So we've got the Spanish, the British, uh, the Italians, the Romanians, the Serbians, and the Russians. I guess the Russians seem kind of withdrawn, to be fair. I, I can't believe that the French stayed out of the first Europa Creed. That's just outrageous. Strongest continental power, and they just sat it out. Oh, well, their choice. And the Ottomans as well are our natural allies. Because the Bulgarians are our natural enemy, because they're the natural enemies of Serbia and Romania, who are our natural allies. And because the Ottoman Empire is the natural enemy of Bulgaria, who's the natural enemy of our natural allies, the Ottoman Empire is our natural ally. Decrease those steel imports. The finishing ships or something. Chromium, anything from Italy? Ah, uh, five, not enough. Edward Halifax appointed Prime Minister. Guess yeah, we'll get it from the Ottomans. Perfect. Yes, we did finish the ship. Fantastic. Oh no, we didn't. Never mind. Now, the Great Prussian Industrial Plan. While Prussia is a great industrial power for its size, it is nothing compared to the hegemonies of France and Britain. We must rapidly expand our industry if we are to compete with them and lots industrial expansion decisions will deal with the Spartacists first. Now, from the Preussisch Arbeits Front, of course, Prussian Workers Front, add the Prussian Workers Front, which grants production efficiency growth plus 10%. The Prussian Workers Front, a state labor union, will ensure prosperity for all patriotic Prussian citizens, but really it will give a facade of workers' rights while subordinating, the, uh, subordinating them to the state. A perfect arrangement for us, at least, instead of plans of more riots. Brandenburg, Hinterpommern, and Northern Schleswig again. The Danish must be stirring up all kinds of trouble. Oh, fantastic. Just these three states. Glorious. Oops. Okay. Probably the easiest minigame that ever existed. You would, you would be hard-pressed to fuck this up. <laughs> Pardon my language. It just gives me building slots? Yeah, It's worthless. And I, I want factories, big men. Now, National Public Controllist Work Policies. Yeah, see, I knew fucking Rome considered himself a public controllist. Schleswig Holstein, one civilian, uh, one civilian factory and one building slot, as well as Arnhem Massoud and Brandenburg. Although the left and the right despise each other, both are ready to agree on labour policy. This will ensure prosperity for every German, uh, for every, I said German, for every German and glory to the state. Can we get knocked down five percent? I felt like it. This is rough, lad. I oh, never mind. Yeah, once, yeah, twenty-seven days. We'll have it finished. Good. Fantastic. 5% construction speed, not necessarily. Yeah, I'll probably try and grab that research. So there's the one here. Some civilian factories. Grab this. That's also 5% construction. Yeah, we'll go for that. Now, Volk's Combined Shaft Program, People's Community. Modify the Prussian worker by construction speed plus 5%, and production efficiency growth minus 5%. Must create a national People's Community that will stand for Prussian values and for the glorious leader. Apologies if you've been here scratching. I am itchy at the moment. 
I'm surprised it's still called the North German Confederation, considering that we, uh, you know, changed from uh, Goering's Germany, or Goering's Prussia, rather, opening the Golden Gate Bridge. Ten days and we can finish off the Spartacists. Decrease steel imports. Why do they keep changing so regularly? Let's take a look at our infantry divisions here. How much artillery do they have, if any? They don't. Got plenty of artillery, though. Too much uh, infantry, rather. Too much infantry. Jaeger divisions? Okay, no artillery. Yeah, we're very short of artillery. Okay, if that's the case, get rid of that. Get rid of that. Straight into artillery. We got something holding back our factory output. Revolutionary treason. Yeah, that's the one. That is the one. Implement Strasserism. Modify the Prussian worker by production efficiency growth plus 5%, factory output plus 5%. I think Strasserism would be a better description for us. National Syndicalism. I think national, when I say when I hear National Syndicalism, I think of Jose Antonio. Now, Gregor Strasser, a party candidate and leader of the leftist pro-SA faction of the party, has an economic plan focused on German work control of the economy and militarization. We should implement this at once. We must hurry our troops to Thuringen, Emland, Rassuren, and Kassel. Don't think we have to, we've had to go to Kassel yet. Again with Holst? Okay, never mind, that's... Yeah, yeah, that's fine. We'll just do this one last time. We probably could just do, uh, end the Spartacist Revolt, but you, you just never know, let. Don't, don't want to be stuck with it. Now, that'll fizzle out. French Empire announces national mobilization act today. Emperor Napoleon VI of France announces that the nation will begin to mobilize its armies on a mass scale to protect its sphere and destroy any threat who opposes them. In his speech, Napoleon declared that a French soldier was fighting not to bring personal glory and fame to his name, and that the most brave and bold would rise the highest. France, despite being neutral in every major war since the Napoleonic Wars, has finally begun a mass build-up, being convinced a populist is tasteful of war uh, with the prospect of French greatness. Is this a joke? I mean, yeah, I mean, if you mobilize, we have to mobilize, you know, otherwise the enemy has, has a distinct advantage. Now, and the Spartacus menace gets event crushing the crushing of the Spartacists. Rome reclined in his chair after an exhausting day dealing with Austrian dignitaries, protesting his troop build-ups. He needed some rest. He smiled. Those shadows wouldn't know what's coming for them. Suddenly he heard a knock. Rome annoyed. I prepared to chew the entree out of... Uh, I prepared to chew the entree out until he saw it was Marshal Heinz Guderian. I assume you have a reason for your entry. If he didn't, Rome wouldn't be happy, regardless of his position. Guderian smiled. Is this the first time I've ever seen the old bastard smile? Maybe when he was talking about the damn Kaiser. Realms Marshal, I wanted to inform you that the last non spartacists have been defeated. The Reds threatened Prussia no more. He did have a reason. The best Rome could think of. Great, we'll celebrate. A toast to the Red Killers. A toast, Guderian replied. A victory at last. Remove revolutionary treason. Yeah, that was... Oh, look. Hitting our political power, our stability, our conflict support. Our production efficiency cap and growth and giving us horrific uh, daily red and dem sock support. Fantastic. Our industry will start kicking up into high gear now. <laughs> Look how much it increased. We'll get to eight, uh, at least nine guns a day. Fantastic. That'll free up political power as well for doing these. I, I would say it would free up political power, but I don't know if we really know if I want to do these. Are we that short on building slots? Not particularly. Well, we're actually short of his industry. We're actually full on fuel for god knows how long, so stop importing fuel. And train up the navy as well. The hell, I hate it when it does that. Train up! That'll, no doubt, we'll have no uh, difficult task getting rid of the fuel with training the navy. And increase state investment. 5% construction speed in order to bring industrialization to the final levels in our country. We will continue the industrialization program in our country unabated. By making investments in our country, we will increase the number of factories to the highest levels. Actually, we should have uh, Strasser's tree, or not Strasser's tree, uh, Rome Street. Oh, why is it gone? Why is his face gone? Hmm, I don't know. Our political vision of Prussia has now been shaped by under Ernst Rome. Hermann Goering did not go far enough in exterminating the bourgeois influence in our nation. The time has come to prepare our nation for total conflict and wipe the bourgeoisie off the face of the earth. There you go, it's back. Fantastic. And now we need to form Germany. <laughs> okay, so what was the point of unlocking this then? If we just give we can't, oh the eternal German realm. Oh damn. Never mind then. Actually, we should probably start with this. Yeah, the German National Revolution. I think this is a better. It's probably better if we can snap up a couple of those small states, then finish off this tree. Then go for uh, Austria. Now the German National Revolution modify fierce revanchism by division or plus 5%, another 1% recruitable population, 5% conflict support and 5% division attack. 
Uh, Heil Deutschland, all Prussians loyal to the leader. Dream of a day when Germany is free from foreigners. We shall destroy the untouchables and break the shackles they have imposed on the Vaterland. Who's first? Let's read the petty Thuringians. Castle and Thuringia will no longer be demilitarized states. What states would those be? They, are, they already aren't demilitarized. That bypass? That's odd. Oh, we need 550k manpower. Okay. Uh, but we don't have any man. We don't have any army experience. Can I get some handily? Where am I to get army experience? At at the end of the fuck. All for 25 army experience as well. You'd swear is you know if it was 100, I'd say something. But okay, in that case, we seem to train up more divisions then. Uh, we'll use I think yeah. Obviously, we'll use our infantry divisions, which we should be able to afford fairly handily. Need to get up to 550k, and the rest cost 700. Well, yeah, we'll just aim for 700. You only need another 250k out of us. Yeah, there we go. Mostly just need a lot of infantry equipment. Add in the artillery later. Okay, so we'll get those two. After 1st of January 1930. Okay, so we do we still do have some time, that's fine. Improved machine tools, fantastic. Uh, construction two, oh fantastic, we'll be getting uh dispersed industry two, so that'll be good for our factory output, fantastic. Do the Austrians of corn this surely they don't, yeah, because yeah, they've just had to fight the Hungarians. Fantastic, that'll really help us. What are the Russians up to? Show me your folk history. What have you got? You any good? They're still huge as well, so. Don't even want to think what kind of level of industrialization you've reached, even if Stalipin is dead. Imperial diplomacy. Can you bring back the Empire though? That's what I really want to know. Oh, based. 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 Oh, and we have to wait until after uh, January of 38. Okay, so we've got, yeah, we've got the rest of this year to build up then. In that case, I think it's back to the, yeah, back to the industrial tree. Wrath of the Germans, we are ready. The traitors in our Prussian lands are destroyed. We need not fear uh, both. We need, not, we need not fear internal dissent. That agent destroyer of empires, the nation, the army are both prepared for conflict. Whatever the leader, wherever the leader points, our targets right now are threefold: the petty crowns of Germany, propped up by Austrian and France in a desperate bid to deny the glory of the German peoples. The Austrians are traitorous brothers who deny their heritage and spit on German greatness. And the French, the former Germans, who have done nothing but weaken and crush the German spirit. All of them will receive their reckoning. They sowed the wind, and they shall reap the whirlwind. With Germany fully united, the time has come. Soldiers of the front, leaders of the staff, officers and workers of the factories. That is the slogan of victory. Hail victory. Need 150. Anything we can guess here. Oh, we actually have a fully... Stopped out. That's fantastic. We have Fritz Todd. Well, ah, nice. We can still have a Todd plan in this timeline. Or turret. Oh, we have Ribbentrop. Ribbentrop is here. Fantastic. I hate that Ribbentrop's in Burgundy and Dino. It's so weird. Oh, we can get... Of course, I'm stupid. We can get army experience through, through this way, right? Please let it be one of those mods where I get army experience through advisors. Or... Why couldn't it be that way? How... Oh, how... Ah. How in the name of God else am I supposed to get army experience to change my divisions? Oh, there. There we go. There we go. There we go. Von Braukic. Are we currently using Von Braukic? Is that you right here? No, that's student. Not using Von Braukic at the moment. Okay, so Von Braukic is indeed up for grabs. 0.3 daily. That's what I really want. We can't use Von Hammerstein Eckward because, uh, yeah, army experience again isn't very isn't <laughs> worth it at all. Division train time, that's nice. Yeah, division speed, Von Braukic. Fantastic. Army Maneuver Expert and plus 0.3 Army Experience Gain Daily. Should have got that sooner. 
Gotta be fair, we have to deal with the Spartacus, so what can we really do? Free state investment, do we read that? No, in order to bring industrialization to the final levels in our country, we will continue the industrialization program in our country unabated by making invest by making investments in our country, we will increase the number of factories at the highest levels. I thought it said the hungry sharks. No, it's the hungry sharks. Interesting. The Vienna Times best writer Adolf Schickelgruber describes the Pact of Ambition as a group of hungry sharks with the Kuomintang being easy prey, licking their lips. Pre-war build-up. Place state investment with production overdrive. Effective change. Oh yeah, sunset overdrive. Haven't thought about that game in a while. Resource gain efficiency plus 10%. Construction speed plus 5%. Resource gain, uh, production gain efficiency plus 5%. One resource slot. Fantastic. By supporting the military industry in our country, we will have created a stronger army by making new conquests. With this army, we will raise our country to the highest levels in dimension. Sparse Energy 2. Boosting our production even further. Fantastic. Gotta get those artillery guns out. Gotta get those artillery guns out. Royal State of Serbia declared war on Montenegro. Oh, no. Oh, Serbia has collapsed. Three different dynasties fighting for control over Serbia. It is likely that they will send support to support soon. Is, is that so? Who are we backing? Maybe we'll get an event about it soon. Uh, tanks or aircraft? I do kind of favor aircraft because they augment your divisions that already exist. Hmm. We can already create decent aircraft, to be fair. Oof. Get survivability studies. Alexandra's fault. Who are we backing? Black Hand Serbia? Are we able to send... Yeah, we're... Yeah, it's, ah, it's one of those mods where you can send volunteers to literally anybody. National populism. We'd probably black... Um, I, said we, <laughs> I said we'd probably black him because I saw Black Hand. No, we'd probably back him. Not Alexander the First, obviously. Not the Dem Sox, obviously. Not you, obviously. I think we probably back you. Blackhand Serbia. I hope that's correct. Uh, what was it about? Yeah. How many men do you have? Oh, you've got a load of men. How many volunteers can I send you? One division. I'll send you air volunteers. If you have an air base, that is. You don't. And it's over. Oh, fantastic. I was right. Send some troops. Yeah. Max volunteer force of business plus three. Send volunteers 10 to limit minus 20%. Intervene more. Even, okay, even larger intervention. Yeah, absolutely. That's the one. I'll have to wait for this to... Yeah, there we go. So now we will send five divisions. Under... And Paulus means that six there is fantastic. That'll be enough to win, realistically. Yeah. But all right, let's hope you enjoyed today's episode. We made quite a bit of progress. Completely trust, uh, trust, completely crushed the Spartacists, as well as got Ernst Rome in power. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider liking, subscribing, as well as commenting down below. I shall see you in the comment section of this video, and I shall see you in the next video. But until then, goodbye.